This is You, Me, and the Community on ASU TV. I'm Candace Evans, Senior Career Advisor for the NYIT College of Osteopathic Medicine on the Jonesboro campus of Arkansas State University and host of You, Me, and the Community here on ASU TV. KLEK 102.5 FM is Jonesboro's first and only Black-owned and operated radio station and Jonesboro's community radio station. KLEK is owned and operated by the Voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. On this episode, we're joined by KLEK General Manager, the one and only Mr. Laganzi Kell. Thank you so much for being with us. How are you doing today? Doing pretty good. Thank you for having me. Good. Awesome. So you have to tell everyone and those who aren't familiar with KLEK, how did it come about? Um, and tell us why you're Jonesboro's premier radio station. Okay, so KLEK was made possible by the passage of the Local Community Radio Act of 2010, which was passed by Congress and signed into law by President Obama. And this law mandated that the Federal Communications Commission, FCC, create a new batch of low-power FM stations for community organizations to serve their community. So upon learning um, that this had happened, I did my research and incorporated the Voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, um, recruited volunteers, and we just began to go around the community to fundraise to get the station on the air, and we finally launched it January 1st, 2015, and as to why we are the premier radio station, and thank you for that, by the way. What basically makes us unique is our commitment and service to the community. We use our platform to amplify the voices of the community to promote things that are going on with the community. We have worked with 50, over 50 other nonprofit organizations, community organizations to let the community know what they have going on. We interview political candidates running for office during election season, faith-based leaders, students. So we really try to be that hub for the community. Of course, we do have our music that is R&B, soul, blues, gospel, jazz, and classic hip hop. While we may be the first and only black owned and operated radio station, we are not black exclusive. We do make a concerted effort to serve the entire community. Awesome, awesome. So just a little background information. Have you always been into radio or was this something that you desired to do? You saw the opportunity and went after it. Well, I've always had a love for radio going back to when I was a kid growing up in Helena, West Helena, Arkansas, listening to KCLT, um, which later became Delta Force 3 Radio, which was owned, which is owned and operated by Mr. Raymond Sims and also, also a a state radio television graduate, so there's the connection right there. But just listening to that station growing up and the community service that they did as a black owned and operated radio station. So that bug was planted early. And then when I was in high school, my best friend who I graduated Central High School with, he got a job at that radio station. I used to hang out with him at the studio there and just saw how much fun it was. So I always just had that love of radio. And so I graduated from A-State with a radio TV degree in 2003. Um, kind of did some career detours here along the way, but that love and passion was always there. And I actually got a chance to work for Four Street Radio in 2009. I worked there full time for about two years, still worked there on a freelance basis, but the knowledge and information that I gained from working there allowed me to start KLEK. Awesome, awesome. So one of the things you did mention that was unique about your station was the community ties. And of course, this is you, me, and the community. So what all is available for, or that in your opinion, that will bridge a state's campus and the community that your station offers? Well. We offer opportunities for students in the Arkansas State Creative Media Production to get radio experience, social media experience, because obviously today's media is all encompassing. It's kind of like a 360. Um, in our case, you have radio, but we do some video as well because we live stream our shows. And again, I mentioned the social media. So there's opportunities for students to get experience. And there's also opportunities for projects that students are doing for A-State to get KLEK involved. We most recently had a crew um, from a class at A-State that is working on a documentary for Black History Month, and those students came by the studio, and they spent a couple hours recording footage, and we offer internships. We've currently got a couple interns that are with us, and we have more 
on the, along the way. So the synergy is just giving students opportunities to further um, their careers or their experience in the media field, or even if they just want to kind of check it out, see what it's all about to see if it's something that they would like to pursue. Awesome, awesome. So why are those partnerships important to you? So connecting with the students, the community, why is that important? I think it's important to connect with the community because we all have to coexist in the community together. We all live here, we work here, so why not connect with each other? There's so much in our country that is dividing us. Why not try to find the things that unite us? Awesome, awesome. So if those people that are think they're interested in radio are wanting to see what, what it's about, how can they go about getting involved? So they can go on our website, klekfm.org, and contact us that way. We are also on all social media, and we made it really simple. You just simply go to klekfm. That's on everything, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, the app that's banned on campus, which we shall not name. <laughs> but on all, so on, on all seriousness, on all social media, it's klekfm. You can follow us, friend us, like us, and also go to that website, klekfm.org. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about your staff. I know that you have some wonderful people there, wonderful volunteers as well. So tell us about the makeup of your staff. Well, just like the way that we serve the community with diversity, our staff, our volunteers are very diverse. They come from a variety of backgrounds, races, religions. Um, pretty much if you want to be a part of the family, we are willing to accept you. The thing that I say is we are a family. We're not just a group of people together. We truly are a family. We look after each other. We love each other, and we care about each other. So I'm very pleased with the diversity um, that we have because I think it is a true reflection of the makeup of our community. Awesome. So now one of the things I personally love about KLEK is that there's events and things that you are you all are hosting, that you all are a part of. So what can everyone look forward to that you all are doing? Well, actually coming up this weekend, we have tomorrow, we have a financial seminar that we are working with Centennial Bank on. It's going to be at our KLEK studio, 1411 Franklin Street from 6 to 7 p.m. There will be free food provided and you'll get a chance to just get some financial literacy tips. And then this Saturday from 6 to 9 p.m. at James Bickham Studios, 221 Main Street in Jonesboro, there's going to be an open mic night. So if you've got any kind of skills on the mic, poetry, rap, karaoke, whatever it is. I think I even had someone come by and said they're an opera singer. But if you've got any kind of skills on the mic, you can come participate as well. And then as we get ready to go into March, we are spotlighting women for Women's History Month. We took nominations all through the month of February, and at least one woman per day based on the nominations that we got will be featured on our radio and social media platforms. So we're definitely excited about that. Wow, so we got ending up February, you all have financial literacy and then also the open mic night and then in March, spotlighting women. What else can we look forward to in the in the future just for those students and those in the community that want to get involved? You got any big things for April and May or um, is it just going to be the big thing, Juneteenth, which I'm excited about and we'll definitely talk about a little later. Okay, well, as you mentioned, Juneteenth will be the next major event that we have that's going to be June. 15th through the 19th, we have a slew of events planned, such as the Juneteenth kickoff, which will be that Thursday at Legends Barbecue Smokehouse, the community worship service, which will be that Friday at New Life Empowerment Ministries, our community fair, which will be that Saturday at 11 a.m. with the community fair at Parker Park at 5 p.m., and the fireworks display right after the community fair. And then that Monday, the actual June 19th date, we'll have a reception at our studio. Mayor Harold Copenhaver will read the proclamation. And also that morning, we are partnering with St. Bernard's for a blood drive as well. And of course, there is a website that has all of this information in which you want to sign up to volunteer, to donate, to be a sponsor, to register for any of the events. It's Jonesboro and Juneteenth.com. That's Jonesboro and Juneteenth.com to get involved. Awesome. So with Juneteenth in particular, how did that come about? I've been in Jonesboro for a number of years and we hadn't always had the celebration. Was that KLEK's idea or was it just community? Tell us a little bit about the history. Well, we weren't the first to actually do Juneteenth in Jonesboro. There was another organizer that was doing the event. Um, he passed away. And so I remember Kubila and I, we were just saying that 
somebody needs to step up and keep this going. And so we came together and we just kind of filled that void. We started small with our community event. We did it at University Lions Park, but we always knew that we wanted to expand it over the years. And of course, last year, it was just like the perfect storm of things coming together because that was the first year that it was recognized as a federal holiday. And so I think that really helped to make Juneteenth last year bigger and better. In fact, it won the Betty T. Sloan Promotional Award from the Jonesboro Regional Chamber of Commerce for an event that promotes Jonesboro in a positive light. So we're just looking forward to continuing to put on this event and to make it bigger and better each and every year. Yeah, because last year, I don't believe it was, we didn't have that many days to celebrate. You said it's the 15th through the 19th this year. Was it that long last year? It was about the same amount of time last year. Okay, gotcha. I guess I missed some of the events, but I know that everyone's looking forward to those events and you are constantly looking for those volunteers, um, individuals that want to be a part. I know the parade, that was something that was new last year, yes. wasn't it? Yes, last year was the first year that we did the parade and the fireworks display, and those yes. were things that I always look forward to. And in fact, with our fireworks display last year, you couldn't have scripted a more beautiful moment. Yeah. The young lady that sang Lift Every Voice and Sing, literally the moment that she finished singing, the fireworks started going off. So yeah. that was something that I visualized when putting the event together, and it came off beautifully. Awesome. So tell me, what's the, the biggest thing that you're looking forward to this year for Juneteenth? Looking forward to the parade being bigger and better than ever, looking for more participants, more people getting involved with the community fair. We really want Juneteenth to bring the entire community together. It goes back to what we're saying. We may be black owned and operated, but we're not black exclusive. So we always want to make sure that the entire community are a part of our events. Awesome, awesome. So there's lots of stuff that's going on at KLEK, um, finishing up Black History Month, also going into Women's History Month, and then also Juneteenth. We'll continue our conversation with KLEK General Manager, Mr. Laganzi Kell. We will be right back after this with more of you, me, and the community. ASU TV, shows like Red Wolf Roundtable, ASU TV News, West Side Football, and more. Gain real life experience while doing what you love. Get involved with ASU TV today. Red Wolf Radio is a student-led organization at Arkansas State University wanting to hear your takes on pop culture, music, the news, and college life. Just about anything you can think of. Located in the Education and Communications building on campus, we are always looking for more volunteers. So if you're an Arkansas State University student, no matter the major, and this is something that interests you, shoot us an email at redwolfradio at astate.edu. That's redwolfradio at astate.edu. Let them hear you how. Arkansas State, we want you to go. Go where learning soars, takes flight, and rockets ahead. Go for experiences, internships, and scholarships. We want you to go. Become A State Maine. Are you ready to go? Go.astate.edu for details. Welcome back to you, me, and the community on ASU TV. We are continuing our conversation with KLEK General Manager, Mr. Laganzi Kale. Thanks again, uh, Laganzi, for joining and telling us all about KLEK. Now, I did want to continue. So um, we talked a little bit about what's going on, finishing up the month of February into March, and then the next big event for the community is Juneteenth. What other events do you all have that's going on throughout the year that we should be on the lookout for or pay attention to? 
Well, in addition to Juneteenth, at the end of this year, we are going to be doing our annual Kwanzaa celebration. And of course, Kwanzaa is a holiday that, again, it's not just black exclusive. It starts the day after Christmas and goes through January 1st, which talks about the seven principles, um, which are positive things to help uplift mankind. But we're going to actually do a little bit of a twist to it. We're actually going to tie into Kwanzaa and awards event. And based on those seven principles of Kwanzaa, there's going to be an award for each one. So, for example, there'll be uh, self-determination, there'll be one on faith, there'll be one on cooperative economics. So people will be able to nominate individuals and organizations that represent those seven principles. And then our signature award will be the Quibilla Jones Memorial Be Intentional Award. Well, this will be for the person or the entity that exemplifies community service in the community. And that is tentatively scheduled for December 16th. And we just recently toured the Cooper Alumni Center. So looking at hosting it there, we haven't quite finalized things yet, but that is what we're looking forward to. So we're actually excited about that yeah. um, so that um, people in the community will be able to nominate individuals for awards. And of course, we have other award categories for different people, organizations, and businesses in the community as well. We're gonna call that the KLEK Family Award. So basically, because I consider everyone that supports KLEK as a part of our family, it'll be a chance for the community to just recognize their favorites. Wow, so how did that particular award ceremony come about? I know you always do, you all always do the Kwanzaa, but with the awards, how did that come about? Well, again, one of the big things about KLEK is we definitely still want to stay true to our roots of supporting the black community. Yes, I, I do say that we are a black owned operator, but not black exclusive, but we still do have to give our own our flowers and recognition. So this is just a way to recognize people that are doing great things. and. And to also draw greater attention to Kwanzaa itself, kind of like how we added the parade and the fireworks display to Juneteenth, and now it has become a bigger event. This is a way to make Kwanzaa a bigger event because basically Juneteenth and Kwanzaa are two major holidays in the African-American community. And we at KLK, we want to make them as big and as possible as Jonesboro because that's going to help us to fulfill our mission to educate, entertain, and empower the community by creating these big events that will bring the community while at the same time educating them on the purpose of these events. Wow, that's awesome. So um, in between your, your big events, you are everywhere. Um, what's your motivation to, to show up at community events? You, sh you live stream almost every event for the community to watch. So why? Because you're busy. So why, you know, after hours come to the events that are on campus, that are around the community, what pushes you and drives you to do that? Well, it goes back to something with what my mentor, Mr. Sims, told me. When you serve the community, the community will serve you. You know, we can't say that we're Jonesboro's community radio station if we're not in the community. And it starts with me, it starts at the top. I can't ask a volunteer or someone to be out and do something in the community if I'm not doing it myself. Plus I enjoy it, it gives me an opportunity to work with technology. And fortunately with the technology that we do have available to us, it does make getting out in the community easier, but we do have to set that example. And a plus, it connects us with the community. When we go out and we do these events, we're getting to be a part of the community, be a part of what they have going on. And it also teaches people more about KLEK and what we're doing, which helps us to get more volunteers, to get more people donating to the station, and to get more sponsors for the station. Yeah, so, um during the break, we talked a little bit about how you all continue to run. So if people are wanting to donate or if they're wanting to get a sponsorship, how would they go about doing that? So yes, as mentioned, our station is owned by the 501c3 nonprofit, the Voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. So the way in which we are funded are by individual donors and by business sponsors. And of course we have fundraisers, you know, we get a few grants too, but it's mainly the donors and the sponsors. And so if you would like to donate or to sponsor, again, you can go on our website, klekfm.org. That's klekfm.org. If you would like to financially support, if you cannot financially support, Share a post on social media, help spread the word, volunteer. Any way in which you can support is greatly appreciated. Awesome, awesome. So are there any major partnerships that you want to highlight? Um, is there any big things in the works that KLEK is working with with other organizations in the community? 
Um, we don't have any current projects, major projects that we are partnering with. Um, we do have sp major sponsors. So one of the things that we have at, KLE, at the KLEK building is our donor wall, and it is organized by donors, for, by total lifetime donations from $100 up to a $1 million. We haven't hit that $1 million just yet. But right now our highest tier is $25,000, and we just had two new members of our $25,000 club, the McDaniel Law Firm and Dr. Lowry Beck, owner of Apache Drive Children's Clinic here in Jonesboro. They joined First National Bank, who first joined the $25,000 club in 2018, and we just had a new member of our $20,000 club, Crowley's Ridge Development Council. So those are just some of our biggest sponsors. But again, we are just as thankful for those who give a dollar as that give $25,000. So we just, yeah. again, appreciate everyone that supports us. Awesome, awesome. So tell us about the future of KLEK because you all have made leaps and strides just in the few years that you have been established. So tell us more about what you have in store. Well, what we have in store is more educational programming. One project that we're currently working on, which I'm very excited about, is our KLEK Civics Minute. And that's going to be a one minute segment that gives tips on how government works. Because I think in today's political discourse, there's so much misinformation. So many people just do not know how government works. And because of that, they are just not interested in voting and in the political process. So by having these educational moments, we're hoping to bridge that gap and encourage more participation in the process. Again, we're not gonna ever tell people who or what to vote for, but we will educate them on how government works so that they can get involved and be more informed and help to make those decisions and elect people who best represents their interest. Awesome, so that's one program. What else do you have in the future? Well, we are expanding our mental health segment because mental health is very important to us. Um, we started that about a couple years ago and that's going strong, but we want to expand on that. We are always looking to upgrade our facilities at the station and we just kind of take that a bit at a time, but we've done some video upgrades and we're gonna, we've done some audio upgrades. So we're also upgrading the building itself. And long term, we want to eventually purchase the facility in which we're, we are at. So at some time, it could be as early this year, we may launch a major fundraiser that would help us to outright purchase the property. Awesome. So anyone, you said it earlier, anyone can come in and, and tour the facility. Um, again, state your address for those that want to go by and see all the wonderful things that are going on at KLEK radio station. We are located at 1411 Franklin Street in Jonesboro. And I tell people, when you type in your, into your GPS, once it tells you to turn on the Franklin, look for the radio tower behind the building because sometimes the GPS may throw you off a little bit. But as far as studio tours, go on the website, klkfm.org. You can actually click the About Us section, contact us, and you can actually click the link and you can actually reserve a time to see the studio and we will be happy to show it to you. Awesome. Okay, so one of the things that I did want to highlight is KLEK, the name itself. I've heard this story several times, but I definitely want to give you the space to share with those who may not know how the name came about. So the name KLEK came from my late mother, Lovey Edmund Kale, as a way to honor her. She passed away in 2012 from complications from breast cancer. And of course, for those who may or may not know, every radio and television station has a series of call letters. And so the K in KLEK, that's because our station is located west of the Mississippi River. So the LEK was her initial. So in the process of getting the station, I remember wanting those call letters and applying with the FCC for them. Actually, the Coast Guard actually had those initials. So I actually had to put in a request to the Coast Guard for them. Luckily, they weren't using them, so they did release them, and the FCC granted us those call letters, and that's how the name of the station came about. Awesome. That is always so amazing to hear, and so special to hear as well. I do want to also highlight how people can listen in. I know my mother tells me she listens in on her phone. Yes. Um, so the different ways that people can listen in to the station. So you can download the KLEK app on your iPhone or your Android phone or on a browser, whether it's a web browser or a mobile browser. Again, that website, klekfm.org. We are on the Live 365 app and we are on the TuneIn app. If you have an Alexa, you can say Alexa, play KLEK and you can listen that way. 
Awesome. And of course, 102.5 FM in Jonesboro. Yes, and I, I love that on your particular radio station, you have special programs. So you do involve the community in so many different ways. Are there any, like, let's just say students or someone in the community wanted to pitch a show to you. Are you open to hearing about those ideas or do you have a list of things that, that you desire to put out? It's a bit of both. There are things that I would like to see, and we also accept the ideas from students. We have had student programs on the station before, such as example, the most recent one was, let's talk about it, full disclosure. That was a group of A-State students that did that show for about a year, and before that, we had Melanin there. That was a show from a millennial perspective. So we are always open to ideas from students if they have those. Um, and of course, that's another way of going back to an earlier question you had of connecting students with A-State to the station, and that would be by if someone has an idea for a show or a podcast that they would like to partner with KLEK on, we would definitely welcome it. So again, KLEKFM.org, contact us, tell me what you got, and let's sit down and talk about it and see what we can do. Awesome. So one more thing before we wrap up, I do appreciate you. Tell us about the events that are happening this Friday and Saturday one more time for those that are wanting to, to come out and be involved. Well, once again, this Friday, we are hosting a financial seminar with Centennial Bank that's going to be at our studio, 1411 Franklin Street from 6 o'clock p.m. to 7 o'clock p.m. Free food will be provided. And then this Saturday from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at James Bickham Visual Studio, 221 Main Street. That's going to be our poetry and open mic night. Doesn't matter if you sing, rap, poetry, anything if that involves using your mouth, you're welcome to do it. You don't have to pre-register. Just show up at the door and show us what you got. Awesome. So again, lots of wonderful things going on in the Jonesboro community um, this Friday and Saturday, and then we'll go into March with Women's History Month. Then the next big event, big event will be the Juneteenth celebration and then the Kwanzaa celebration. But one thing that I know is that we will see Mr. Leganzi Kell and those representatives of KLEK out in our community. So that will do it. For this edition of You, Me, and the Community, I want to thank my guest, KLEK General Manager, Mr. Leganzi Kale. I also want to thank Instructor of Creative Media Production, Mr. Dustin Sullivan, and his students who are behind the scenes running the show. Thanks to engineers, Derek Herring and Mr. Clayton Holderfield, along with graduate assistant, Jacob Nee, for all the help as well. We'll see you next time for another episode of You, Me, and the Community. Thanks for watching.